And it's, uh, you know, by the way, thank you for playing my music, Parliament Flashlight, one of my favorites. I think it was my first album, actually. Uh, so, yes, I am dating myself, David. That's okay, though. That's okay. I was, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the short story is my, my family's originally from Puerto Rico, but I was born and raised in Chicago. Uh, uh, we live near the Cabrini Green Housing Projects. And so, you know, it was tough. Like, you know, I don't want to go into the long, sad story because everybody has one. But, you know, it was the food stamps, the government cheese, the powdered milk. Uh, my mother was the constant motivator. She said, go to school, get the education so you can get that great J-O-B. So I went to school, decided to get an engineering degree. I got it for one reason and one reason only because I wanted to make money. Yes, I was money driven. Uh, passion had nothing to do with it. It was all money at the time. And so I did that, followed up with the MBA, did corporate America for a while, and then back in 2001 decided to go on my own and just step out of the corporate world. And uh, I don't know, it's, you know, um, I did a movie called The Motivator, and it really talks about, you know, the story, the journey of, you know, going through corporate America, being there, which is great. I think corporate America is fantastic, great experience. But, you know, one day I said, let me just write some books on motivation. And then finally, I came back home, which is selling, which is what I eventually loved doing and wound up doing when I was in corporate America. Uh, but what happened was, it was funny, because again, I went, I went to college to get the engineering degree for, you know, the money. I mean, we just wanted to make money, right? I heard engineers make good money. And so, true story, uh, I graduated, and then like three years into the gig, right? Three, three years into this job, I'm like, I hate engineering. You know, sitting behind oscilloscopes, it just, it wasn't me, you know what I mean? Uh, and not that I was a natural born salesman, but I just knew I, I, I couldn't spend my life behind a computer, you know what I mean, or, you know, technical equipment. And so I moved around within, you know, several organizations until, you know, uh, one day uh, I wound up with a company, it was a wireless company, it was at a, we were living in Minnesota at the time, and a great company called EF Johnson, right, and I was one of their wireless application engineers where I would design, literally design, wireless systems, right, the, the towers, the antennas, spec everything out, right. And to make a long story short on how I got into sales was, I remember we won this one deal. The sales guy that I was working with, his name was uh, Ken, uh, Ken Cook, I remember his name. And he was working, we were, I guess, bidding a system. And it was like a, a huge system. It was like a $5 million system, right? And so I designed it. I mean, it was one of the most complicated designs I've ever put together. Uh, I was competing against, you know, at that time, Motorola and some other top companies like Ericsson. And... Uh, we won the system, right? It's like $5 million deal. Boom, we won, man. I remember me and Ken were high-fiving each other the whole bit, right? Because it was like the first big win. And the company was actually very happy about it, obviously. And so Ken said, come on, Victor, man. I'm taking you out to lunch. I said, oh, yeah, cool. So I remember we went out to like this place, like a steak place, right? I don't know. I, remember, I don't remember the name, but it was like, all I know is Ken must have dropped $50 on my on my lunch, if you know what I mean. I was like, yeah, I was happy. I'm pumped. I'm psyched, right, David? So I go, I go back to the office full, like literally full, right? And so I, and then I, I, I'm all happy, and, and then I talked to one of the senior engineer guys there. His name was Roy. I still remember his name also. And so he goes, Victor, what are you so happy about? I said, well, you know, Ken took me out to dinner, you know, we, uh, to lunch. We just won this great deal. He says, he goes, I don't understand why you're happy. I said, what do you mean you don't understand why I'm happy? He says, he says well, I, said, I, don't, I don't understand why you don't understand. And he goes, let me explain something to you, Victor. I said, I need, I was like, here, uh, it's like young son, like son, let me explain this to you, son, because you're not getting young blood. Kick back. I'm about to I'm about to school you right now. He said, Victor, he said, Victor, he said, so Ken bought you a $50 lunch, is what you're telling me. Something like that, right? I go, yeah, you know, $50 lunch, man. He says, he goes, do you know? Here's the key question. He goes, is it Roy said, do you know how much he'll make in terms of commission on that system? I said, no, nope. never really thought about it. I said, how much will he make? Naively, I asked, right? He says, well, conservatively, he'll probably make about fifty thousand dollars off that system. Man, it's like you could hear crickets in the background. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like a moment. You know how you have moments in your life where it's like enlightenment, right? Moments, right? And I was like, what? And so that began like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I designed the system because now I started getting mad. I'm like, I designed the system. I put all the work in. What do you mean he's getting $50,000, right? And so about, I don't know, I, I don't remember the time frame, but about a few months later, Three to six months out, um, they needed somebody to do. They needed somebody who can sell in Latin America, right? Uh, had a technical background and spoke Spanish. Well, I got the Spanish down. I got the technical part down. I just never sold in Latin America, so they threw me out there for the first time. Uh, I was mentored by this guy named Jose Santana, great guy, and that's actually how I got into sales. And I never looked back after that. It was like you know how you find your groove. 
it was that that for me was that was it because you know I was traveling I was going to all these countries um, you know I've been I've got I got to go to like South Africa you know the Middle East you know over to Asia all these places and you know a kid from the hood to be able to see all this stuff was actually very interesting but that's actually how I got into sales man that's kind of the uh, short story yeah <laughs> that, that that was that was that was very wrong of you to put that on the air. <laughs> Very wrong of you. <laughs> uh, you know, I was messing around one day, and I, so I wrote out the lyrics real quick, right? I was actually, I got my first Mac. And so I wanted to see how that, you know, the, whatever, that guitar program worked. And so I came up with that. I actually recorded that on one take in my car. That was my sound booth, by the way, so it was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, like I said, the first time I... When I was when I started in sales, you know, I was working for a company, same company, if Johnson again, and they gave us these tickets every month. See, speakers would come in, and I remember somebody had some spare tickets, and they go, "Hey, Victor, would you like to go see some speakers tonight?" And I'm like, "Sure, whatever." And that was when I first saw Zig Ziglar, and I'm like, and I just remember having that moment, like, "Man, look at this guy on stage!" It was like true to form, poetry in motion. That phrase, I know it's cliche, but it was poetry in motion watching this guy. And I remember one day saying, you know, one day I want to do something like that. And that got me into uh, Toastmasters, which, you know, is a speaking organization. And that got me interested in speaking. And it was always in the background until, you know, uh, I'll just say almost 10 years later, I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to write books and speak. And, but that was the, one of the original nudges or pushes that got me going into the, uh, into the speaking business. And Zig Ziglar, I just, you know, you can just listen to that guy all day. I don't get tired. I love I love the guy. Man. I, lo I love his stories. I, I just love his attitude about life. And uh, yeah, he, he's definitely a, you know, a great inspiration to me when it comes to speaking. Well, you know what it is, is that when I, when I look at my material, uh, I can actually, you know, I always tell people this. I said, you know, if you want me to go corporate speak on you and you want me to say things like, you know, we're going to look at strategic deployment and certain initiatives within there, you know, I can talk like that if you want. But what I've noticed is that you, uh, the best of the best speakers, if not educators, are those that can take the most complex subject and break it down so much so that you can't help but get it and understand it. And so when I put stuff together, I said, you know, how could I weave this into a story, make it simple to understand, make it impactful, but still make it so simple that anybody can really understand it without being, you know, without talking down to your audience. So it's almost a skill set, if you know what I mean. You don't want to talk down to them and give them what's obvious, but you also want to say, hey, let me not make this this hard. So, you know, I really work on crafting. You know, people don't realize that I work a lot just to get three to five minutes down right. Uh, I work on that three to five minute module, I call it, a lot just to get it the way I want it. So it resonates with people, yeah. Okay, so the great question, by the way. So let me just try to frame this. Um, uh, and before I forget, there's there's a video that I have online that really talks about how I construct a speech. Uh, if you search for it or send me an email, I'll be more than happy to send you the link. Uh, one of the things you have to remember is that uh, there's some there's something called the Ebbinghaus curve. The Ebbinghaus curve is basically how often people forget or how fast they forget. And one of the saddest statistics you'll find is that uh, people will forget 75% of what you told them within 24 hours. 75% of what you told them within 24 hours. And what's even worse is that within a 30-day period, they'll forget 90% of what you've said. And even worse news is that the 10% they're able to recall, 50% of that is inaccurate. Okay? That's how the human mind works. So these are like, you know, they're kind of staggering when you kind of look at these numbers like, wow, that's kind of depressing. And so one of the things I do is uh, when a company calls me up and says, Victor, I want you to speak for, you know, I got a group. I always say, okay, who's your demographic? Tell me who's in the audience. And what they usually say, you know, I go, I go by gender, right? Uh, men, women. Uh, I also like to know, you know, for me personally, I like to know, you know, depending on the part of the country, I know what works. So if it's more Midwest, I, I try to follow a more conservative line of speaking. If it's on the East Coast, man, they like it raw, you know, to the point, get to it, right? Uh, the West Coast, kind of a blend. And so I always ask people, you know, give me three things. And this is the key part here. I always ask my clients, give me three key messages you want me to weave into my presentation. And that's the message. Those are the three key messages I'll drive home. Because, again, studies have shown that most people can't hold more than two to three concepts at one time. And so what I'll do is I'll weave three concepts in and then I'll repeat it at least three times during that presentation. So call it the three by three rule, right? Three messages, and throughout the, uh, I reinforce those at least three times throughout the presentation. 
But then to really get them to listen to it and remember it, I wrap a story around it. And if you look at my videos, you'll really start noticing that there's a, there's a pattern here. I always, you know, tell a story and make a point or make a point and then tell a story. And people always remember stories. We're very visual when it comes to remembering something. So if you can tell them a story, tie it down to those three points, each one has a story, each point, then I think that's the best way to uh, make it memorable and stick. Plus, also, last point is that the client who hired you is very happy that you actually gave them what they wanted. Does that answer your question? Oh man, excellent, Ex exceptional point, man, exceptional point you're making. You, th th that's it. I can't, I couldn't have put it any better because I don't think people see the difference. Yeah, no, no, I don't think people see the difference, and you clearly see that when you're presenting or when you're tell or you're selling. You're re when you're selling, you're really telling a story, and that story has a narrative, and that narrative is about why we're better, or why you should use our technology, and within that narrative, you're basically giving them three key messages of why they should buy. So you're on, you're on point. Thank you. The, it's SellingerGroup.com. Yeah. Uh, the Sellinger Group, uh, I was looking for... Do you have five minutes or you want me to wait for after the break? Okay. The, what happened was from... A, from okay. Uh, from a, uh, thinking from a marketing position. Uh, uh, down the road, fast forward my career. So I always look with, with the end game in mind. The end game in mind is this. I don't mind sharing this. I want to create sales training programs that down the road that I can license, right? Now, if I want to license them, I have to license them under a certain brand. Uh, that's why I came up with the Sellinger Group. The Sellinger Group is going to be my, my official training company, uh, my, pro, um, my training company for sales programs, right? And so Victor Antonio is really a separate brand. That's me personal, right? And so that's kind of why I, I'm building the Sellinger Group now because I'm moving towards now developing sales training programs that I can license. What does that mean? Let's say, David, you know, one day you say to me, Victor, I would love to be a sales trainer just like you, want to make big dollars, blah, 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 right? <clears throat> well, I said, David, but then you say, Victor, but I don't, I don't have material. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to go about making this happen for me. What I'll do is I'll license my product to you for a fee, obviously, show you how to do it, but then I give you all the materials that you need and then show you what you need to do.